How's it going guys? Today we are going to be doing something completely unheard of, talking about the Persona series. Crazy. But specifically guys, today we're going to be discussing P5S's new trailer, and in case you already forgot, that stands for Persona 5 Scramble, The Phantom Strikers, the game announced five months ago that nearly everyone forgot about. At first, I was like this. But now, I'm like this. Yeah, that could be kind of fun. Atlas pushed out a trailer last night. Actually, no, that is not correct. Even before that, they made an announcement for an announcement about a month ago, and as you can imagine, that made everyone very, very happy. So we're already starting off great. But even before then, in general, most of the fan base was lukewarm at best to the idea of a Persona-style Dynasty Warriors game. I mean, we've had Hyrule Warriors in the past, then Dragon Quest Warriors, then Fire Emblem Warriors, then Family Guy Warriors. It was getting a little bit ridiculous. On top of that, its first trailer was completely overshadowed by the other trailer at the same Persona event. Why do they keep doing that? Also, said trailer just was very vague and kind of let everyone down because they thought it was Persona 5 Switch. But plot twist, baby! Persona 5S might not actually suck. And in this video essay, I'ma tell you why. Along with um, just a bit of my thoughts and a little news roundup of all of the new information we got about this game from the latest promotional video. As well as some baseless speculation because apparently you guys like that for some reason. Day. First off, surprisingly Persona 5 Scramble is in fact a direct canonical sequel to the original Persona 5 game. Meaning, we finally get to see what happens to our party after the credits roll, and the answer is the premise for Persona 5 Scramble. After having a hectic year stealing treasure from the cognitive world of rotten adults and literally shooting God in the face, the team decide to enjoy their summer vacation while they still can by touring some of Japan's most famous cities, such as Okinawa, Sapporo, Sendai, and Osaka, to name just a few. But unfortunately, as fate would have it, twisted forces have begun to reveal themselves once again in the form of a new palace-like areas all across Japan, and only Joker and his motley crew have the power to stop this new threat and save their home, Japan, and probably the rest of the world too. And while that setting may sound like nothing new as far as the Persona spin-off games are concerned, there is one rogue element at play here that really piqued my interest, and that will be this girl shown here, who you finally have a name for, and that name also leads to some interesting plot threads. Sophie is the new character introduced in P5S, and she is mysterious as she is redheaded. That is a sentence. I'm gonna keep it real with you, Chief. We don't know everything yet about our new femme fatale, other than the fact that Joker seems to uncover or awaken her presence in the new cognitive Shibuya, and she's like, Yo, what up, Joker? Which is really sus. How do you know who I am when you're in a magic cube thing? On top of that, judging on her character artwork, right, and how she fights in battle, I don't believe this person is like our other party members, in the sense that, uh, yeah, the girl with magical floating heart-shaped pigtails might not necessarily be a regular old human. I mean, Morgana's not human either, but don't tell him I said that, but you get what I'm trying to say. Sophie is a little strange. To further expand on this point, I like to bring up the gameplay segments where Sophie is present, while the main Phantom Thieves all have their personas displayed on the user interface, and Joker is shown both having Arsene and a secondary persona in the form of Silky, Sophie is shown having behind her what appears to be a city or maybe some kind of robot, so that begs the question. Does she have a persona or not? Well, not having a persona in a game series titled Persona is not entirely unheard of in the franchise, right? It does get you thinking about what kind of person she is. We've seen in past trailers that certain characters in the series seem to have an almost magical control over Shibuya at times, right? So perhaps Sophie is something similar. I don't know. I'm just throwing some ideas at you. Her Phantom Thief attire, if you even want to call it that, is also really strange, almost alien. Her choice of weapon, even more so. Giant yo-yos. Where, how do they think of this crap? <laughs> and the fact that her position in the story is beyond vague 
is... <sighs> It's a just a telltale sign, right, that this game, while it does have Joker as the main character, it's going to be largely about Sophie and her connection to this new cognitive world. Honestly, though, she's my favorite part of the trailer. I like her design a lot. She's really grown on me. I'm not seeing a lot of people talk about her, but I think she's cool, and it's like a fresh new take on the Persona series. But after a while, it does start to get kind of repetitive. Oh my god, that every new Persona game spinoff or re-release of the same game has to have a new female character to drive the story, opposed to just letting the central conflict steer the narrative instead. Maybe I'm just stupid or something, I don't know. Don't get me wrong though, I don't mean to sound too negative. I mean, I'm good at that, but I'm just being realistic about it. That Sophie is gonna have to bring a lot to the table to compete with Atlas's past creations. Heck, she's already got tough competition in the twin tail category. But now I'm getting off topic. Okay, gameplay. You really gonna try and tell me you never played Dynasty Warriors? You know exactly what the frick kind of game this gonna be, okay? But in case you don't, Koei Tecmo and specifically W.O. Mega Force are the people behind the Dynasty Warriors games. Set in the Romance of the Three Kingdoms, China, it's it's you, you press square and triangle a lot and you, you beat up the dudes, also known as Muso games. For the longest time, they never really broke the mold until recently where they started doing spin-offs, like I mentioned before, with you know Zelda, Dragon Quest, I think they did One Piece and Gundam too, and now Persona 5 is, I guess, the next big thing. Imagine to do a lot of like really unnecessarily long combos, fighting the same bunch of demons and shadows and cognitive whatevers over and over and over again. And yeah, that's basically what the game, see the game's not even in my hand, right? But I can already imagine what it's going to be like. But here's what I personally liked about this trailer. They shook my expectations, right? There is a variety there. This isn't just a copy and paste of the latest Dynasty Warrior game. There is platforming segments, there's exploring the cities, we don't know how big they are yet, but that's there. And there are segments where the Persona characters get to, you know, be characters. They get to interact, exchange dialogue, and have memorable moments. And that matters a lot to me. That's why I play these kind of games. Persona Q kind of had that. Persona 4 Ultimax, not really so much. In the dancing games, it's there, but it feels kind of shallow. These feel like actual segments from the Persona games because they have a similar presentation, and that's kind of cool. Frankly, I'm not the biggest Musou fan, okay? Like, I played the Fire Emblem Warriors, I played the Zelda Warriors, whatever the free. They just didn't click with me. I enjoyed them early on, but only for so long, right? Because after about the 5,000th time, right, of you seeing the exact same attack animation on the same number of enemies that are just sitting there doing nothing, I just, I just lose interest, dude. But this game here is at least giving fans who aren't knee deep into that style of gameplay something else to do, which is so nice. And man, this is just such a good trailer. Now keep in mind, this opinion is coming from the mouth of a guy whose YouTube icon is the main character of this game. So chances are high, I'm gonna give it a shot. But I'm also just being real with you, this game it wasn't looking good, and now the popular opinion has shifted. Of course, it could just be a really well-cut trailer, and once we get the game in our hands, it could be all buggy, muted, lifeless, and it could suck, and just be like a cash grab that was made because, well, Persona's a popular series right now, but honestly, I'm, like, optimistic, and that's not a thing I say a lot nowadays in regarding to video games. But we're not done yet. Let's get back on topic and talk about these other characters shown off in the trailer. These two rotten effing adults, one of which appears to be a shadow, and the other looks like one of the many people still trying to put the Phantom Thieves behind bars. Going in order, it looks like the first palace of the game we will be, um, scrambling in? That, that doesn't sound right. This lady, her palace, Shibuya 109 building, JK, it's 705 in this building, I guess. Oddly absent in the original Persona 5, it's apparently now been taken over by this lady who we know literally nothing about. Who is she? What is she? Is she single? I don't know, dude, but... If I had a guess on who she is, she's giving me some Palm You, Palm You vibes, okay? You know, the Japanese artist you didn't? Well, now you know. Look at all her clothing. It's got all these eyeballs, and the thing she's holding kind of reminds me of her mic stand. Am I grasping at straws here? 
You tell me. Later on the trailer, Joker gets dragged into what I can assume is her control room or throne of sorts. Maybe she's some out of control Harajuku fashionista, a pop idol maybe, or my current theory, Persona 5 Scramble is gonna be all about wrapping up the loose end in the sense that, sure, Shido is gone, but his corrupt cabinet is not, and maybe this lady is an extension of his corruption. Tough to say for certain, but she is an interesting character design, and since the original Persona 5 only had one female villain, if you can even really call her that, I think changing things up would be really cool to see. So I'm excited for this. And lastly, not the nearly as cute, maybe, I don't know what you're into. This dude, he ain't got no name. Oh, he looks like a Trevor to me, so I'm gonna call him Trevor. So Trevor's also at the end of the trailer, right? And if I had to guess, this looks like the main bad guy who's connected to Shido, maybe his second in command, or at least has some connections to the police because he's, well, he's literally right next to the SWAT team in the cutscene, right? And look at the area surrounding him. The background of that kind of reminds me of a hot spring, like a fancy motel, you know, kind of like the thing you could go and her mom ran, think about it. Also, yeah, hot springs are confirmed, so there is some correlation there. What if this guy is going after Joker? Because he's like, dude, this guy's he's linked to the fam thieves. I just know it. We just got to pin something on him, and then we can arrest him. I'm no expert in video editing. This video is evidence of that. Point being, with the way this trailer is framed, and this shot in particular, this guy is most likely the major antagonist for Persona 5 Scramble. What he's up to, what is his scheme, frankly, it's up in the air. But this guy, it's giving me some weird vibes and I can't put my finger on it. Now, as far as news goes, that's pretty much the end of things. This was one of the shorter trailers that Atlas has pushed out for one of their games. It's a lot of just showing off the gameplay because that's what these types of games are meant to do. They're supposed to like engage action fans, people that like that Musou style of content. But I wanted to spend the rest of the video kind of just discussing some of my thoughts and random speculation that I pulled out me bum. So warning, if you've not finished Persona 5 yet, you should probably just not even be watching this video. Go get to that and then come back to this but hear me out right so this game is plot relevant which is really cool i'd like to add uh i'm not the biggest fan of how persona q2 has all this character development and interactions but because it's like a dream within a dream it's not like everyone forgets afterward it's cool that this character progression is going to actually stick with the characters even if it doesn't come up in future persona games right but hear me out so we know for a fact that now that Joker and friends have defeated Yauta Balf, Mementos is gone. But how are cognitive worlds still popping up? That's just, obviously they need to make another game, right? But at the same time, with Persona 4 dancing all night, they briefly brought back the Midnight Channel just so they could have a setting for that game. So that's not anything too concrete, but hear me out. Back to Sophie, right? The cube that she's in that is shown in this trailer has a very strange... Uh, resemblance to Yaudabouth. Not the Holy Grail, but Yaudabouth when he's in that final boss area and he has the chest plate and it's all white. The cubes in the engravement, well, really all over his body, look eerily similar. So there's gotta be some kind of connection. And to further this point, right? Sophie. Sophia. Very similar sounding names. Now this is gonna get freaking weird if you have no idea what Gnosticism is, but I'll try and give you the cliff note version of it. In Gnostic tradition, right, Sophia is this grand aeon, this being of like ultimate creation and power. She birthed a being called the Demiurge, or as in some sects he's known as Yaudabaoth. Yaudabaoth then decided, I'm gonna just make a world real quick, and Sophia was like, don't do that, and he did it anyways. So the Demiurge, or Yaldabaoth, is this all-powerful thing that sees himself as a god and begins creating, but he's creating very flawed beings, and it's kind of thought to be that the living world, the world we're in right now, it's not the true world, and it's because the Demiurge made us this way. Sophia, though, can't really, you know, stop him because she'd be interacting with this fake world and she'd also be contributing it, so she's not any better. So depending on how Atlas wants to spin it, Sophia could potentially be sending Sophie a fragment of herself to the cognitive world that I guess is left over by Demiurge to clean up his mess. Maybe. 
Or Sophia, in traditional Persona fashion, could be this malevolent goddess that is so mad that these darn phantom thieves dared destroy Yaldabaoth. It's time to finish the job, and Sophie's like, oh no, I gotta fight you guys, no! And then the final battle starts, right? Did that make any sense? Probably not. The point being is that Gnosticism is a very difficult thing to understand because it's basically biblical fan fiction from the Middle Ages that no one really understands. People just like to pretend they do. And Atlas saw, hey, this is a cool story we can tell, and we, they took pieces from it, and that's why Joker's ultimate persona is Satan Isle. I also believe that... Uh, that will be a key point in Persona 5 Royal, but that is a video for another day because I'm still working on it. Anyways, that is the end of spoiler talk and just baseless speculation, but it's too big of a coincidence to not be true. In my opinion, Sophia will be brought up in either one of the Persona spinoffs we're about to receive. But yeah, that's my video for the day. It was, uh, frankly, kind of all over the place. Um... I didn't think I'd have this much to talk about with a Persona 5 Musou game, but the actual lore and identity of Persona and how they, you know, interject these mythological, like, entities into the mythos, very, very cool. Also, the game looks tolerable, which, <laughs> crud, I'm really happy about that because I really like Persona, if you couldn't tell. But yeah, guys, I really want to talk about the whole, um, Satan Isle versus Yaudabaoth versus Sophia like thing but i'm still doing some research so i just gave you a little bit tidbit of it but if you want to see the full like theory that i've been working on for quite some time make sure to subscribe i'm gonna try and get it out before persona 5 royal comes out but that is all the time i have for today guys a little bit on the shorter side for my analysis but you know that's they didn't give me a lot of work with this is what i'm getting at but thanks once again for checking out my channel hope you're pumped for the game it's looking good and make sure you subscribe because I have a lot of really cool Persona videos coming up. I'm not going to be spoiling Persona 5 Royal for myself, but I will be streaming like the early segments of it. So make sure you're subscribed if you want to see that. And yeah, thanks for everything, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.